models of molecular evolution continues in this class let us introduce uh, several of the other models like jc69 k2p hky85 and gtr how these are actually what what these uh, models and why these are useful for so in the last class we saw the poison correction right to correct the p distance and um, the main problem with the poison approximation of poison correction is that it assumes all mutations are different from each other so that you are not never going to get something called reversals or the one which that cancel out you know back mutations you know the reversal so there is no possibility of reversal in if you if you take the poison approximation for it right? and since there are only four dna bases many mutations are uh, you know that reverse out the effect of the earlier one so that needs to be corrected that uh, you know uh, multiple substitutions at the same site so that needs to be corrected. So several probabilistic models of the evolution has been developed uh, to convert this observed distance into the measures of the actual evolutionary distance. So these are called models. So the, I told you the models are nothing but probability probability based mathematical equations to model it. Right. So the relative complexity of these models is a function of the extent of biological, biochemical and evolutionary assumptions, the so-called parameters that they incorporate into the equation. So the parameters in the is, you know, simplest sense, something that can change. You know, there is a concept in, uh, you know, in uh, mathematics called degree of freedom. So as the degree of freedom increases, the parameters also get increased, something that can change it, you know. So really complicated equations have a lot of parameters comparing with a very simple equation. Right? So sometimes the models are really complicated. That means the equations are really complicated. So which one to choose from? We have if we have a lot of models, you need to actually use some other test, you know, to choose among the contrasting models. So substitutions are usually described by probabilities of the mutational events, like A to G, what is the probability? A to T, what is the probability? So you need to have a matrix, you know. So the model is, is something called Markov model. So it is a probability based Markov model with the Q matrix kind of complicated concept. But Q matrix looks like this a probability of uh, an event. Let us say that T uh, transition is all those things, right? Uh, A to A, A to C, A to T, A to G, then C to A, C to C, all kinds of uh, various substitutions that you can observe in the nature each probability uh, in this set so this is basically a mathematical set in which you are putting all the probabilities together that this kind of set is known as q matrix okay so one of the simplest uh, uh, equation or simplest model of molecular evolution is called juke scanter jc69 and you might wonder what is this jc69 it's nothing but juke scanter's paper was published in 1969 like reference Jukes and Cantor 1969 that is what JC69 is all about so the model is really simple or the simplest uh, attempt to model the mutations in DNA also considering the back mutations you know uh, the, the base right uh, uh, multiple substitutions at the same site so it assumes that there is a single mutation rate for all the bases not differential substitutions you know like transition and transversions are treated equally which we know that it's not equal, but sometimes some data set it might be equal to, right? So you cannot discount JC69 as wrong. It's a simple, you know. So why to go for complicated model if the simple model can explain, you know, that is uh, what you call it as Occam's razor concept in philosophy, mental model. So it also assumes that all bases are present at 25% each. So out of the whole DNA sequence, the genome, 25% are adenine, adenine, then 25% are cytosine, like that. Each of these four nucleotide bases are at 25% each. And that all sites mutate at the equal rate. You know, so all these things. So it's a constrained model. Very less parameter. Nothing can change it. It's a highly constrained. That is why it's a very simple model. You know? So JC distance equation can be obtained by some, uh, you know, amusing mathematical manipulations from the Poisson equation. You know, so a Poisson equation, you remember, it's D is equal to minus ln 1 minus P. Here you're simply adding uh, two factors here, minus 
3 by 4 ln 1 minus instead of 1 minus pt is 4 by 3 p. So only difference from the Poisson equation is that this 3 by 4 and 4 by 3. That's it. To get this Jukes scandal corrected distance. It's a corrected. So you are accommodating for multiple substitutions. So this can also be written as the probability of the mutating from one base to another. So you know the Q matrix if you look here. So everything is alpha alpha. There is no beta here. You know transition and transversion is all same. And now if you look at here A to you know this is a it's like a, the distance matrix right c to a or a to c all these you know so this is a triangular right so this is basically a mirror image always is a mirror image so in this particular upper part is optional you don't really need it in any of this distance matrix so these are these are drawn in proportional to the frequency frequency of the changes so a c to a or t to g you know all, all those are you know for example this particular dot means conversion of t to c or c to t so how much is that uh, you know this kind of substitutions so everything is equally likely so here there is uh, nothing can vary everything is invariable that equation is there is nothing no parameters in it that is why its degree of freedom is zero for the juke scanter right so now if you uh, you know that the mutations uh, we already dis described, you already discussed about the transition versus transversion. So transitions, uh, there are only four possible transition errors while transversion there are eight. So if it's completely random, transversions are a lot more likely, but that is not the case in the nature. The reason is transversions lead to non-synonymous substitutions with grave consequences. So that is why in the nature, transitions are a lot more likely than transversion. Right? So, transversions are rare. Right? So, that factor also we need to put in. So, mutations, you can call it as alpha and beta. Transitions are alpha. Transversions are beta. As you can see here, A to G or vice versa or C to T and vice versa is alpha. And all the rest is beta. Transversion. So, each can have its own probability. That is what is in the Kimura 2 parameter. K2P or K81. Because the paper was published in... Uh, 1981 by the Japanese population geneticist, the Moto Kimura, the same guy behind uh, neutral evolution, right? He's a prolific, uh, a prolific uh, researcher, you know. So here you can see that transitions are generally more frequent than transversions. So you need to have a different rate, you know. So uh, this model, the K2P model assumes that rate of transitions per site alpha differs from rate of transversions per site beta so alpha and beta can be different but it's uh, you know it's a uh, 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 division its ratio is same right the base exchangeability ratio so degree of freedom is basically ti by tv ratio or kappa right transition divided by trans uh, transversion whatever be that ratio that remains same so that is the degree of freedom so now the degree of freedom is a kappa for Kimura's three parameter for base exchangeability that accommodates. Coming to the frequency, it's something like same like the Juke scanter. 25 percentage for everything. It's already fixed. Nothing can change. So each of these four amino acids can have only 0.25 probability. So uh, there is no uh, nucleotide. Uh, you know uh, the frequency is exactly same, right? It's invariable. The frequencies of the nucleotide. But it's a little bit relaxed here. You know, K2P is a bit relaxed than Juke scanter. Reason is that, uh, it, it, you know, the transitions and transversions can have different probability. Here you can see that, uh, you know, so this one G to A is basically a little bit than T to, uh, this is T to A or G to C is large, then again small. You know, so this kind of way you can actually have it. So different transitions and transversions can have different probability, right? So yeah, that is that is what the K2P is about. Now coming to the next model is Felsenstein's 1981 model, right? So F81, that is F81 is Felsenstein, Joe Felsenstein of the University of Washington, a very renowned evolutionary biologist. So his model allows the frequency of the four nucleotides also to be different. So you know all, all this one is not just 25% but it can have anything but the total is always one. 
because in DNA is A, T, G and C, right? So if you know A, T and G, then you are already can see what is this T. So one minus all three, are you getting the point? Because the total is always uh, one. We already know the total. For example, the class, if I say that the total class is 32, okay? And in the, in the class of 32, there are 20 girls. So then I don't really have to say the rest is boys or there are 12 boys in it. Why to say that? It's it's already there in that fact, right? So that is why if if four things can change, then total is also known. Then instead of four, it is n minus one is a degree of freedom. So four minus one, the three is a degree of freedom for this Felsenstein's model. So as the degree of freedom increases, it becomes relaxed, it becomes complicated and error rate is also increasing so you need a fine balance you know simple model uh, you know the error is less but the fit is little bit rough complicated model fit is very good but error rate is also high so you just need a fine balance you know so that is uh, why you need to actually select best fitting models by maximum likelihood based test we will see that in the next class right so, uh, but it doesn't take transitions and transversions in account, only alpha is there, there is no beta. The previous one has got beta, right? The Kimura's two parameter has got alpha and beta. You can see that alpha and beta can have different, different things. So you can see that beta, beta, then alpha, these two are alpha, these two are alpha, you know? So alpha can have a bigger probability than beta. So this is, these three are beta, these three are beta, smaller. So beta is small, alpha is larger for this K2P. Right? But in this case, everything is same. But only thing is that alpha, there is no alpha beta. Everything is alpha. But, you know, so pi A, pi B, pi C and pi T. So pi means frequency. So frequencies can change. Every four can change. So it only three is a degree of freedom here. Right? Now, so HKY model is very interesting. It's kind of a combination of Kimura true parameter and Felsenstein's uh, you know, uh, 81, F81 model. So you combine these two together to get Hasegawa, Kishino, Yano, 80, HKY85 model. You know, Hasegawa, Kishino, Yano, 85 model. So it allows the rates of transitions and transversions to differ and base frequency to vary. Many things can vary now, you see. It becomes a lot more relaxed. The equation gets complicated. Error is also increasing. That is another problem, right? But the fit with the you know the model with the data the fit is also increasing you know so in a sense hky85 is a combination of k2p and f81 so here degree of freedom is four because you are getting three from uh, you know the uh, frequency out of four you know three is a, the the frequencies of the uh, the basis nucleotide basis and one comes from the ratio transition by transversion Ti by TV ratio, that is the kappa, right? So that 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Degree of freedom is 4 for HKY model. Now, coming to the next model, that is Tamura Nei 93 model or TN 93, uh, another common uh, model, which is quite similar to HKY 85. So transition, uh, transversion is equal, but transition is variable. That is the only difference between these two. So uh, there are two more additional parameters, B, a, G, while E, C, T, so these two uh, extra parameter gets into the Tamura. So uh, in addition, it's just like Felsenstein 81 or HKY 85, Tamura 93 model allows the frequency that is pi of four nucleotides to be different, you know. So pi is different, uh, but transition is equal, but transversion is variable. That is what this Tamura 993 model is about coming more complicated model that is general general time reversible model that is rav model or gtr model by tavare in 1986 it's more advanced model right so gtr or rav model allows each possible substitution to have its own probability so substitution means one base changing to another so until gtr all this earlier discussed model uh, we are grouping this uh, you know, changes into two types, transition and transversion. 
but in this model it is not merely translation transfer any kind of base changes are accommodated so we have four uh, you know four uh, amino acid uh, four nucleotide bases in the dna and each you know so if you actually calculate uh, all kinds of combinations so there are six various ways you can combine right a to t and vice versa and a to g like that and c then t then g so if you calculate then there are six possible way to convert the substitution so everything can have its own probability so substitutions are not merely limited to transition transfer so six means n minus one is a degree of freedom that is basically five so and now coming to the substitutions you know so and of course uh, uh, it's not merely limited right and also of course the other three is coming from the pi that is the frequency it's just like the earlier models uh, you know like hky model so pi a pi t pi g and pi c is equal to 1 so 4 n is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so here it is 5 6 minus 1 is 5 and here it is 3 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 total degree of freedom is 8 more relaxed you know more complicated equation right so substitutions are reversible so substitution from i to j has same probability as uh, substitution from j to i which is quite same for all uh, of these things right so everything can have its own probability you can see that each one has got its own size so it's not merely restricted to uh, you know the transitions and transversions alone as in this uh, uh, q matrix so this is how that the formula of this q matrix for gtr model as you can see it's kind of complicated you know so uh, but make uh, be, be aware that the more complicated equations are not always right you know you need a fine balance isn't it so in summary juke scanner has got no degree of freedom and you can modify this juke scanner to allow for unequal base exchangeability to get a kimura 2 parameter which has one degree of freedom one thing that can change and now G juke scanner if you can accommodate for unequal base frequency not merely limited to 25 percentage you know so if you can have a uh, unequal base frequency then uh, you know uh, you can have um, Felsenstein's 81 model now if you allow for uh, this k2p if you allow for this and this that means uh, virtually you're combining these two models together to get hky model Hasegawa Kishino Yano model, which has got four is a degree of freedom. And finally, allow for all six base substitutions. So all the base exchangeability or uh, uh, you know uh, permutations, if you do it, then you are going to get GTR model with a degree of freedom of eight. You know, so that is what this is the most complex model, while this is the most simple model. Another graphical uh, way to present it. So you know, you are going to get the GTR from JC16 and the simple one. F81 and K2P, then HKY85, and finally GTR. So you can see that these are the guys behind it. Guys, because everybody is a, a, a male here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is highly biased sex here for the uh, evolutionary biology and molecular phylogeny, isn't it? So Thomas Jukes and Charles Cantor, Jukes Cantor 69. This, these two are the, the scientists behind this Jukes Cantor model. Then comes Kimura, Moto Kimura, the very famous evolutionary biologist, you know, uh, a giant, uh, you know, which you can even group in giants like Charles Darwin. So Kimura 80, equal base uh, frequencies, transitions is not equal to transversions, you know. So though it is the basic uh, frequencies are equal, then K81, little bit changed, then Felsenstein's 81 model, Joseph Felsenstein from uh, Seattle. Then uh, Masami Hasegawa, this fellow, then Hiroshisa Kishino, then Taka Akiyano. So these three authors together they formed HKY85 and finally GTR model of Tavare. Right? Finally, all of these models can further be modified by two parameters. One is rate homogeneity, another is rate invariability. What is homogeneity? Rate homogeneity means uh, all these previous models assume that silent assumption that substitution rates remain constant across the sites of one locus, whatever the locus that you are looking at, like some of the gene. 
you know, if you do the sliding window of this codon, middle codon, if you slide it, uh, the inside one gene, every site's mutated at the same rate. That is a assumption, but that assumption might be invalid, isn't it? So as I told you, especially in the pathogenic organism, the antigen antibody determining moieties, the so-called epitopes can, uh, you know, uh, mutate at a much faster rates, isn't it? So mm -hmm. that needs to be accommodated in the equation, isn't it? So different regions of the nucleotide, nucleic acid or amino acid may have different probabilities of change. So these are something called site dependent rate variation you know so even in this uh, uh, protein so if you look at the protein the the protein structure the uh, secondary or tertiary structure so you know the domains uh, are you know you cannot actually change it but the loop section which doesn't form the tertiary domains can uh, change you know uh, the i mean the uh, mutation rate m might be more you know so there are several constraints of the mutation in the secondary structure of the the protein moiety, right? So, mutation rates of the codon in the codon DNA sequence, the exon, will also be different depending on the position of the codon. We already covered that when we talked about the degeneracy of the uh, triplet codon. Third position, you know, the mutation rate is very high because most of the resulting codons are degenerate. It codes for the same amino acid that is synonymous of silent mutation, right? The third mutation third position now more uh, after third position comes the second position and finally comes i mean after third comes first position and finally comes the second position the reason is that second position if the in the codon second position if the uh, you know mutation happens usually caught for not usually invariably caught for a new amino acid so it is non-synonymous substitution so it is not tolerated at the second position never at second position you know? all these things are the mutation rate so or the selection the neutral positive or purifying at the different regions of the gene or protein uh, you know so some regions can be under the constraint of positive selective pressure or negative uh, selective pressure uh, you know like uh, detrimental uh, you know the mutations needs to be removed by purifying selection all these things uh, can influence the substitution rate or rate of molecular evolution inside the same gene depends on the position so this i already told you k by ks uh, you know that is that will actually give you an idea about the selection is it positive or negative so if you look at the k by ks of the middle sliding window of the middle codon so some region it's actually low lower than one and some region it is higher than one you know k by ks higher than one means it is positive selection that is Darwinian selection is happening at some of these locations, which is a big deal, isn't it? And what are these locations? What is this basically? This is the gene called GP120, that is envelope glycoprotein 120 of um, HIV virus, you know? So these regions of the HIV virus are fast evolving to evade the host immune cells, antibodies, epitopes. And the same thing if you actually check it this this kind of thing if you calculate for if you illustrate for uh, SARS-CoV-2 you know the spike proteins some sections of the spike proteins are fast evolving all these variants alpha beta delta all those uh, you know the mutants are because of that so basically you know not all the positions are uh, you know evolving at the same rate you know so rate heterogeneity means uh, variable rates inside the same gene or same uh, you know locus isn't it so why locus and gene is not same because some locus are not gene you know intergenic spacer is also locus isn't it but genes are always locus right so uh, substitution rates can have considerable impact on the sequence divergence you know so rate heterogeneity is usually modeled by something called gamma distribution mathematically so you know like bell curve uh, you know, the, like Gaussian distribution or Poisson distribution. We also have got something called gamma distribution, another probabilistic distribution. So it is used to describe the heterogeneity of the nucleotide substitution rate across the sequences. So uh, to indicate that gamma distribution model is used, you just have to add plus G. For example, K2P plus G. So Kimura 2 parameter is a base model equation with 
plus g addition it's like a modular equation right so plus g is yet another uh, mathematical formula is again added on to the base formula to get a bigger formula you know so the range of rate variation among the site is dictated by the shape parameter of this alpha uh, alpha of the distribution estimated from the data so the shape parameter means if the alpha is very low you are going to get this kind of l shaped curve you know and as alpha increases you know so higher alpha means you are going to get bell shaped curve you know like gaussian distribution you are going to get bell shaped when the alpha is 20 if alpha is 2 you are going to get a flat kind of uh, curve now if alpha is 0.5 it is you know like an l shape so what does this mean the l shape means extreme rate variation across the sequences every site is entirely different variance is very high now in the case of high like this kind of high alpha uh, of the gamma distribution high alpha means uh, very few sites are evolving at so much faster rate while almost all sites are not at all changing in variable sites like in the case of epitopes so that kind of things you are going to get a bell shaped alpha you know the gamma distribution with a typical bell shape while uh, in you know uh, if every site inside the same gene is evolving at more or less same rate there is a very high variation then you are going to get an l shaped curve you know so that is what so juke scanner you can correct with this gamma i told you like a model right J jc69 plus g is going to be like this so 3 by 4 alpha multiplied by 1 minus 4 1 minus 4 by 3 p to the power minus 1 by alpha minus 1 so this is the formula once you actually correct with the gamma uh, correction as well in addition to the juke scanner 69 model so every model you can change it uh, by adding into the gamma so every model can have plus g you know now another option for every model is plus i what is this i i for invariable sites so all the model previous model assumes that we don't have any sites which are invariable every site is changing but if you violate that assumption and if you accommodate that some sites uh, can be static forever it's never mutating so if you do that assumption as well you're going to have to add this plus i you know so that is basically modifying your equation to accommodate this rate invariability rate invariability means some sites are not mutating some sites are not substituting right so uh, these are evolutionarily invariable so if you have that one then you need to have plus i as well so every single model which we described like hasegawa kishnoyano or k2p or felsenstein or gtr the rav model every model can be uh, changed the equation can be modified by adding plus g or plus i or both together plus g plus i you know so it's like modular uh, you know that uh, uh, changing of this equation so we have got lots of model then if you actually uh, look at this plus g and plus i and plus g plus i for each model then there are lots of model you know and how do you select which model for my data set the data set is usually multiple sequence alignment and for my alignment which model should i choose so uh, you know i look at old paper of the same like for example if i'm working on uh, you know working on the the moss a bryum species of the moss to make the phylogeny of the bryum earlier authors used hky plus g right and should i just use that same thing for me no that is a very bad practice that is not the rationale of choosing the model is by using a test to see which model is optimal you know so that is called model selection that we'll be explaining in the next module